G'day guys, Taste Gaming. I've recently gathered together some of the more exciting mentions from the developers in Discord within the last week to highlight for you now. Is there fishing? Not yet, but it's in our roadmap. Will all crafting refining stations have an animation? If so, will animation always be on or only if it is doing something? Can all the buildings that we see in the video be made by us? We've all seen all third person views so far. Will there be a first person view? All crafting stations might not have an animation. It will depend on the station and what feels right. We won't do animations just for the sake of animations, if that makes sense. All buildings you see will be possible to craft as long as you've figured out how and got the resources, even the potted plants and cacti. At some point, we would like to add first person view. Right now, there is only third person. Yes on the fruit, and there will be swimming. What will the main objective of the game be? Will it be to kill some kind of boss or mainly just surviving and building or something to do with the volcano? Would it also be possible to have insight on what building mechanism you'll use, as in what other games have similar building mechanisms? I have to be a bit careful about answering this one lol. Not that it cannot be answered, but certain things are not ready to be revealed yet. As to the building system, give us a little longer development time to test out a couple of things and see if they're right for under a rock. What can be said is that we aim to make it as convenient as possible while also trying something that we haven't seen before in any other survival game. Apologies for not being able to be going to specifics yet. 1 to 10 players in game, will there be set characters like Grounded or customizable character preset like Ark? No set characters like Grounded. We will give much more freedom and we are working on a degree of visual character customization. On top of that, Under a Rock comes with a whole, well, fuckload of skills, attributes and abilities. It's going to be fun. Will there be a playable beta or something anytime soon? Not anytime soon, but at some point we wish to open up for closed alpha testing. Will there be a multiplayer server available to run? You will be able to choose between setting up your own dedicated server or do the typical rent a server. Whichever you prefer, it will be there. If you play together during closed access, we have a special surprise for you. Think you are going to dig it. Nice. Things to discover also procedurally generated or handcrafted? There might be a mix, but many will be handcrafted. Their placement is procedural with rules like biome, altitude, and so forth. In speaking to the advanced AI, Bracer says, we have a lot of ideas for it. Our greatest challenge is to make this work in a procedural environment while at the same time being as light as possible on the CPU. The latter becomes very important for the dedicated servers that are going to care for one to 10 players and in experimental mode, many, many more. But yes, we do want the AI to throw surprises and curveballs at you. We have some experience in making an interesting and fun AI, so we aim high with Under a Rock, but it will take time and be a work in progress. Some before early access, some during, and even more polish on it after 1.0 launch. We are confident that no matter what it is, will be better than the standard you see and attack AI. Feedback on how we are doing will be invaluable once we open for closed alpha access. Tier 1 decorations or buildings, do you guys have a working co-op that you can jump in together at the moment? Is the windmill some form of either crafting or refining process? Co-op has been in for a long time. We're still figuring out what building assets will be put into which tiers, but there will be a lot more. Decorations will be available as early as possible as we want players to make their builds their own. But not necessarily all decorations will be available from the start. The windmill will be a refining process. Now the real question is, will there be tames? If not, some sort of glider mechanic? And how punishing is fall damage? There is a tentative yes on both meaning we have them in the roadmap but cannot give any promises as to when. Per design, there are tames and there are companions. Together, they fall under the category of pets. Full damage will be a scale in terms of damage and ties heavily into your stats as well. Full damage will be more forgiving than in a realistic game. Are you saying that foliage isn't just going to disappear and your base will still look just as good as if you were standing next to them, as in render distance not being a thing? Basically, yes. There are certain foliage assets that we will have to spawn in due to the procedural nature of the world, but more, almost everything can be seen everywhere. Will there be an option to color your base with paint, or is it what you see is what you get? That is a big maybe. We really, really would like to offer the possibility, but Nanite is a different beast altogether, making that process very uncertain. What we will do is investigate and figure out if we can make it happen. How do you plan to solve the problem of certain games where the procedurally generated structures become too repetitive or uninteresting after a while? 
because I have an idea about it if I can afford to submit it. We have some ideas regarding this, but there will be a lot of trial and error to find a good balance. I cannot really answer much more on this. It is liquid midunk stuff. Will there be a strong PvP aspect like friendly competition or better to work together? I know you stated some PvP concept, but how strong will this be? Not quite sure yet, it all boils down to how much time we have. In regards to building, will we be able to build individual components such as walls and floors, or will it be pre-made buildings? What radar system do you currently have implemented? Will the radar affect the player? Rain making me wet and giving me a cold debuff. All the buildings in the video are made up of smaller building blocks like walls, foundations, windows, railings, etc. And Reddit will have adverse effects, not just for visual fluff. It took me about two days to build the location scene in the video, from the individual pieces we currently have. It was so much fun that I lost track of time a lot. All locations seen in the video are also on the same randomly generated island in different locations and biomes. Edit. All of the locations were built in a few days, not just the village, haha. This was using in-game tools. Will there be a combat system? If so, what kind? Rather FPS or melee or both? Bow and crossbow or more modern like guns and stuff or more fantasy like monster based organic gun? Combat will be semi tricky involving your typical light attack, heavy attack and charge attack. There will be active blocking and parrying and there will be a rolling to avoid damage. Target lock is optional. As to what kinds of weapons, we are going to try a couple of things and see what feels good. Some funny weapons, like using a large fish as a club, and similar are already made. Dungeons and caves, absolutely, and drum roll, they will be procedurally generated to a degree. If you have the stamina to reach the islands by swimming, then by all means, yes, or drown. Otherwise, make yourself a raft and pray there is no shark. At some point, we will add underwater, diving and other fun. Don't know when, but it is in our roadmap. No comment on the magical guns. How far are you guys right now? I've seen a couple of times comments which make it seem a dimly lit fire yearning for more oxygen, aka brand new, but will grow rapidly. We have just started on implementing the actual gameplay systems. The way we work is by taking care of the really, really hard stuff first, like procedural generation on the scale and visual quality we have, and then the multiplayer backend so you can play together and have fun. Not sure if it matters to hear it or not, but we were also supporting both dedicated Windows Server and dedicated Linux Server. What types of biomes do you plan? On the screenshots, we can see tropical biomes and coast beaches, but will there be biomes by like volcano, desert, snowy mountain? And if so, will the elements have an impact on the player, like wet, hot, cold? Also, still in the spirit of exploration, have you planned any structures to discover? Temples, ruins, etc.? Yes, we have plenty of plans for biomes, just too little time, but we have plans. Environment and Reddit will have an effect, and based on the inspiration behind Under a Rock, there will be things to discover, and yes, there will be. How will the respawn work? Will there be a start area, or can you select a region to spawn randomly in? And will there be a penalty upon death? The respawn point you have set for sure, the latter we haven't made a final decision on. There are a couple of possibilities. There will be a penalty on death. We know how it is going to work, and I promise to reveal that not too long into the future. So it has been brought to our attention that many of you may not understand our new technology, and that many non-dodos, devs, may not quite understand what Nanite is, and why it is important in a game like Hunter of Rock. So I would like to try to quickly explain to you all what it means for you, the player. I'll try to keep it as easy to understand as possible, and if you have any questions, please let me know or you can PM me. Question, what is Nanite? Answer, Nanite is a new technology in Unreal Engine 5, the game engine under a rock uses, which allows for basically unlimited levels of detail, no more popping, no more low, low poly meshes in the distance. Question, why is it good for me, the player? Answer, it basically means you can build what you want without the old limitations. Want to try to build a city? Go for it. We haven't had time to build an entire city to test this yet, as it would take a while, but in the trailer I built a nice little town. Question, are those actual strings on a stool? Answer, yes. Question, how many details can you add to your home? How many decorations, etc.? Answer, yes. Question, where else can I see this tech? Answer, the recent Matrix Awakens tech demo on PlayStation 5 and PC use the same technology to build an entire city. I can't wait to see the character customization and skills. Game looks wild already. We did a side-by-side -side comparison in multiplayer last night of jumping. 
I had skill level 1 and 7 had max skill. There was an awesome difference to watch. Yo, I get the challenge of getting it all to work, but I do like your view on it and excited to test out this AI you created as in most games it gets quite easy after a while when you learn the animations they have for attacks and can fight them in your sleep. But to be more specific, likes and dislikes, becoming more and more prepared and ready for war if harassed, changing combat tactics and at the same if attacked by more than one player at the same time, going for resources secretly trying to follow you back to your base and so forth all are things we would like to achieve will there be diversity between the players under a rock comes with a light rpg stat system based on attributes skills and abilities what you do determines what you get better at and attributes receive trickle down from your skills in this sense you would differentiate yourself but you will eventually be able to max out all attributes and skills if you spend enough time but before that, there will be a noticeable difference and crafters, as an example, goes up in strength faster than a person running around exploring. Skills matter, meaning a higher crafting skill is necessary in order to achieve certain things. For example, high tier item upgrades. We do this so that base builders, crafters in a group have more value. When it comes to crafting recipes, will we have them all available at start or will we have to explore and gather materials to expand the recipes? or possibly with leveling. Crafting recipes will unlock through discovery of materials and refinements for the major parts, but there are recipes that must be discovered and may be researched. Certain things will also tie into your crafting skill, making focused crafters a bit more valuable in group play. Skills level up through actions that drain stamina. Attributes level up from trickle down, downs coming from skills. As skills go up, you'll, you get ability points that you can spend on abilities. Abilities can be reset. All attributes and skills can be maxed, although it will take some time. 